What is the first test you're going to do for calcium? PTH, PTH, PTH. Anytime you have high calcium, the first test which should you, what should you do is PTH. And if the PTH is low, then your differential is either malignancy, either granulomatous disease like fungal diseases like histoblasto or sarcoid, or somebody is taking a lot of calcium and vitamin D. All of them will have low PTH. Right? Malignancy, I think about three malignancies based on mechanisms. Multiple myeloma causes it by increasing IL-6, but I don't check IL-6. So what will I check? SPEP, UPEP. Lymphomas cause hypercalcemia by converting 25-hydroxy into 125. So what am I going to check? 125-hydroxy levels are going to be elevated because lymphomas convert 25-hydroxy into 125. And solid cell tumors cause it by PTH-related peptide. So you will check PTH-related peptide, PTHRP, right? Granulomatous disease also causes hypercalcemia exactly by the same mechanism by increasing 125-hydroxy vitamin D. So 125-hydroxy vitamin D is going to be elevated here, and it will be elevated in lymphomas. If the PTH is high, all the board wants you to know is your differential diagnosis should be primary hyper para versus FHH. FHH will, both of them will have high PTH, but how will you differentiate these two? In primary hyper para, you'll have bone stones, bone groans, right? Whereas in FHH, you will have nothing, but you still uh, have to differentiate. So primary hyper para, you'll have high calcium and low FOS, right? Because what is PTH? Phosphate trashing hormone. So calcium is high, phosphate is low. Uh, and of course, these patients have high urine calcium. That's why they have high risk of stones. Whereas in FHH, the problem is in the calcium sensing receptor. It is familial. And how would you differentiate it with primary hyperpara? These patients have low calcium in the urine. They do not form stones. So this is this highlighted part is really important. Low calcium in the urine and FHH, whereas high calcium in the urine and primary hyperpara. Uh, primary versus secondary hyperpara. Primary hyperpara, we already talked about. P PTH is elevated, high calcium and low phosphorus, whereas in secondary hyperpara, calcium is going to be low normal rather than high. And what is driving uh, everything is the phosphorus is going to be high. Most of this, uh, you're going to see it with chronic kidney disease. So if you have chronic kidney disease and phosphorus is high, what is it? Secondary hyperpara. Treatment, saline, saline, saline for hypercalcemia. And after that, you can use bisphosphonates, right? Saline is the first. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate first, and then give them bisphosphonates. A 55-year-old female, past medical history, significant for squamous cell cancer two years ago, doing fine, exam is normal, calcium is 11.4, uh, uh, calcium previously was 9 to 10, phosphorus is 2.1, alkphos is 180, PTH is 108. PTH is 108, and calcium is 11.4. Which of the following is the most likely cause of hypercalcemia? Hypercalcemia or malignancy, vitamin D, primary hyperpara, osteoporosis, or FHH. So uh, majority of you got it right, primary hyperpara. I'd given you squamous cell cancer to confuse you, because if it was squamous cell cancer associated hypercalcemia, what should your PTH be? Suppress, it was not low. So it was not related to the malignancy. This patient had primary hyperparam. 